Good morning. I'm just gonna sit on the ground here. So in this video, I'm going to break open some geodes that I bought online. <laughs> I couldn't like go find geodes near me because I don't live anywhere near them and I'll explain that later. And while I break them open, I'm going to answer some common questions that people have about geodes. So first of all, what are geodes? Geodes are rounded or sub-rounded pieces of rock that have a hollow cavity inside that are partially filled in with minerals. The rock that this geode was in, like the rock formation, had formed before the minerals precipitated in that hollow space. So how are geodes formed? How are these formed? What is inside these? They look like a normal rock, but they're not. <laughs> Geodes form when that empty space in the mineral is filled in with water and the water leaves. There are minerals left behind from that water that interact with the geochemical composition of the rock, of the host rock, and minerals crystallize in the hollow space. This takes a really long time to happen and sometimes it can take many, many times for water to fill in that space and leave again for the geode to even partially be filled in. Before I break these open, I'm just going to answer one more question, and that is, where are geodes commonly found? Geodes are commonly formed in volcanic rocks because there's a lot of vesicles in volcanic rocks, and sometimes they form in sedimentary rocks like dolostone or dolomite or limestone. So a lot of the volcanic geodes are found in places like Oregon or California because there's a lot of volcanic rocks. Volcanic rocks are rocks that form at the surface when lava cools. So when lava cools at the surface, there's usually bubbles that form because lava tends to have a lot of gases in it. So those gases kind of bubble up in that lava as it cools. Eventually the rock forms with these open spaces in it. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to let you see some geodes. Okay, I have a hammer. I have my rock hammer and I have a claw. Also, you should have eye protection. I left mine in my car, um, but wear eye protection. <laughs> and then you're just gonna lightly tap it. You don't wanna completely obliterate it. out and ruin a nice towel. <gasps> it opened! Okay then. That is a little boring. <laughs> Let's try to open that up a little more. first one I opened wasn't the best. <laughs> I think you can still call this a geode. I think some people would call it a nodule because it's completely filled in. So this outer ring protected the rest of the inside from being weathered away as the host rock weathered away. So this outer ring is likely made of uh, a quartz mineral like chalcedonia. It's the same material as quartz. It's made out of silica. It's just a uh, microcrystalline quartz instead of macrocrystalline. This type of quartz. This is macrocrystalline quartz. And the outer ring is chalcedony, which is made out of uh, microcrystalline quartz. So this used to be an empty space in a rock. This, it used to be about this big. And over time, water seeped in to this empty space here. And slowly, the minerals started crystallizing here on the outer layer and formed this outer shell, basically. Over time, when the water came in and left again and again and again, more minerals crystallized in here all the way to the middle. And it must have happened a lot because it filled in completely compared to these other ones where they're not, filly, they're not as filled in. Okay, we're gonna try a new one. Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna try, you can't see my face. I'm gonna try this one and hope this one's a little better. This one is beautiful, oh my god, okay. 
I really like this one because I'm pretty sure this is botryoidal quartz. Botryoidal is just the type of crystal habit that formed when the quartz crystallized. And you can see the outer ring in this one as well. See um, the darker circle right here? The darker outer shell, I guess you could call it. That is microcrystalline quartz. And it's not as easily broken down. Quartz is actually very resistant to weathering in the first place. Okay, <laughs> zoomed in. Okay, so I have this other box that has a bunch of quartz geodes in it. There's, they should be a little easier to open. See, they're not as rounded. <laughs> kind of looks like, I don't know. It just looks like a pretty normal rock. Like this kind of just looks like rocks you'd find in your driveway or something. I wish I found these in my driveway. There's a lot of them in here. Wow. Okay, we'll do this one first. It's really light actually. So I can tell this one's pretty hollow. Ooh. Okay, listen to this. Can you hear it? Those are the crystals loosely uh, jumping around inside when I shake it. That's how you know it's a geode. If you're ever looking for geodes, if you pick up a rock and you're like, this feels kind of light, but I can't tell, shake it and that'll probably give it away. Ooh! See, now I can see the ones that were loose. Also, you could call this Druzy Quartz um, because the crystal habit is just a bunch of little tiny crystals of quartz. The next question I was going to answer is what kind of minerals are usually in geodes? Commonly it's quartz or calcite, sometimes fluorite and maybe some other minerals. It depends on the groundwater or the water that's seeping through the rock and it depends on the geochemical composition of the rock. In volcanic rocks, it depends on the type of magma that formed that rock, or the type of lava that was coming out of the ground, what the chemical composition of that lava was. So another common question people tend to have about geodes is, can I find them in my area? Personally, the answer for me would be no, because I live in upstate New York, and I don't really live near any volcanic rocks, so there aren't really any places I can find geodes if I just go on a hike. I wish I could just go on a hike somewhere and find geodes lying around on the ground, but I can't. Uh, you can figure this out pretty easily. You can do a quick Google search. You can also go on places like mindat.org. There's a lot of data on there that tells you about mineral localities. You can also buy a book about rock hounding in your area or just a book about the general geology in your area and just do a little bit of research on that. You can also figure out who the experts are in your area. Maybe you know some local geologists, maybe some professors at a local college that teach geology. I know that there's some rock hounding like Facebook groups or geology groups that sometimes you can ask these kinds of questions in. But yeah, there's a lot of resources that you can use out there. The internet is great. Yeah, if you live in places like Iowa, Oregon, California, Washington, you could probably find some pretty cool geodes. I know the state rock of Oregon is thunder eggs. Thunder eggs, I don't know if you can technically call them geodes because they're completely filled in usually. Thunder eggs are essentially made out of agate, which is also a variety of quartz. It's a, var it's a variety of microcrystalline quartz, and it's actually the same thing as chalcedony, which is what I was talking about here on the outer rings. It's concentrically banded. I'll show a picture in here. I think Iowa, the official rock of Iowa, is quartz geodes. The next question I think people have is how big are geodes or how big can geodes get? So the most common geodes are smaller like these. or They can all basically fit in my hand. Yeah, but there are bigger ones that I'm sure you've seen if you've ever been to like a natural history museum or some kind of gallery with rocks and minerals. Some people have them in their house. They're really expensive because they're usually a really big it took a lot a lot of time for all those minerals to crystallize in that empty space they're mostly this size or even smaller they can go all sizes i'm gonna do one more of these quartz geodes there we go and this is macro crystalline quartz which with a little bit of micro crystalline quartz on the outer layer the next question is, are they valuable or rare? 
And I kind of answered this in my last question, but basically the bigger and the more rare the minerals inside, the more valuable. I know that recently there were heart-shaped geodes with amethyst in them found in Uruguay. I know that there's also ones in Brazil that have been really valuable. The ones that I broke up open today are not rare and they're not expensive. They were like $25 for all of these. The minerals inside are pretty common. Even if they're pretty, they're common. So the last question I wanted to answer was, how do you know that a rock is a geode and not just a normal rock when you pick it up? Because obviously when you pick these up, they kind of just look like random chunks of rock that I found on the ground somewhere. I don't personally have a lot of experience with geode hunting because I don't live near any geode localities. A good example of this is what I was showing you earlier when I uh, shook the geode. I already know these are geodes because I bought them, but when I was shaking it, I don't know why I shook it. I was shaking it and I could hear something inside, kind of like when you shake a Christmas present. If you shake this one, I don't hear anything. Let me see if I can hear another one. Yeah, I can kind of hear it in this one. It's a, it's a really tiny noise, but yeah. Other than that, you should start out by going somewhere where you know that you can find geodes. So. I'm not gonna just go walk in the woods here and try to look for geodes because I know that the rock formation here doesn't have the conditions that are needed for geodes to form. Yeah, first of all, just go to a place where it's possible. Then just, you know, look around, dig around for round looking rocks, round looking uh, chunks of rock like this and shake them, pick them up, see how heavy they feel. If they're lighter, they'll probably have a hollow space in it. Um, if you have a piece of rock that you know is definitely not a geode, pick up a piece of rock that you think might be a geode and compare the two. So if one of them is a little bit lighter and they're about the same size, the lighter one is probably a geode because that means it has a hollow space inside of it. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about geodes and that you had fun watching me break open some rocks. Thanks for watching.